community, families, and schools connect. It can't be understated the, the importance of doing this together. How that teamwork improves the lives of kids every day. Plus, hard work pays off for a Columbia River senior. So she's probably the best student I've ever had in my teaching career. The research project that earned her a big scholarship. And you won't believe how much money one school raised for charity in just one night. Hello and welcome to In The Know, I'm Helen Raptus. In the first part of this episode, we're gonna do something a little different. We're going to go in depth to introduce you to the school district's Family Community Resource Centers. Chances are there's one in your neighborhood. Nick Ball explains what the Family Community Resource Centers are all about. At first glance, this Family Community Resource Center is just a room, but there's more than meets the eye. The importance probably can't be overstated in the impact that it has on kids and learning. Families in poverty often can't afford school supplies, shoes and jackets, or health care. Students whose basic needs aren't being met, or children in single parent homes or homes where substance abuse is an issue, are often unprepared to find success in class. A family community resource center can help. It becomes the um, place that catches all of the things that happen in the community that normally make it through to the classroom and make it difficult for teachers to do their job. Located at nine Vancouver Public Schools, FCRCs connect families with resources such as food, clothing, pencils, and paper. They also give students and parents a sense of belonging and community. The idea that someone's going to give them something and cares enough to give them a new package of pencils is huge in their lives. The results of that engagement can be seen in the classroom. Our children's attendance, when we focus on that and meet with parents and talk about ways to improve that, does improve. Um, their learning goes up from there. And it's not just about the kids. We focus on the family as a whole. FCRCs reach out to parents, offering computers to help in a job search, videos to improve their parenting skills, or simply a friendly face. Parents can come in, whether it's just to come in and sit down and have a cup of coffee and talk to me about maybe some resources they need, or whether it's to come in and take part in a class. It's just a great, great opportunity for families to come in and find out that their school is a part of their lives. For In The Know, I'm Nick Vole. As Nick mentioned, there are nine Family Community Resource Centers in Vancouver Public Schools. Here's a map. Family Community Resource Coordinators are located at the following schools. Discovery Middle School, McLaughlin Middle School, Fruit Valley Elementary, Martin Luther King, Harney, Peter S. Ogden, Eleanor Roosevelt, Washington, and Houck. These are all high-need schools, often where more than half the students qualify for free or reduced lunches. That's a federal marker of poverty. Each school with an FCRC has a staff member assigned to helping families full-time. Their jobs encompass a wide variety of tasks, but the first thing they have to do is build relationships. Chad Young introduces us to a person who helps those FCRC coordinators do just that. Officially, her title is Family Community Engagement Coordinator. But that doesn't really tell you what Diana Avalos Leos does every day. And a lot of my work is building relationships. For lack of a better word, she's a go-between for Vancouver Public Schools. Uh, one day I may be working um, with a mentoring of group of girls at Fort Vancouver High School. Uh, one day could be uh, the work that I was doing today at Roosevelt Elementary School in being the role of an interpreter. Mm -hmm. Her Hispanic heritage makes her an invaluable resource. For a lot of our parents that, you know, whose first language isn't English, they don't often understand the homework that is sent home in English. So this provides an opportunity for them to understand the material better so that they can work on it with their kids at home. But it goes well beyond simple translation. Diana's main job is to engage parents in the educational process, no matter their native language. So we are um, helping them um, with understanding the importance of that homeschool partnership. If we 
build a strong foundation, not only with the student at kindergarten, but also with the parent, the goal is to create not only lifelong learners, but lifelong partners as well. A major barrier for many non-English speakers and for parents entering their child into school for the first time is trust. That's something Diana works year-round to earn. Um, we are here to help them um, just by our actions. Because word is, words alone are not enough, but by our actions do we start building that trust. Having her come in with, you know, the knowledge and awareness and you know the skills as well as the same similar cultural background I think really helps them feel more comfortable and familiar and, and welcome. Mm -hmm. The parents feel that they're completely embraced not by one person but by us all. To provide children with the best chance possible to succeed, the district is partnering up with other agencies in our community. Oftentimes that means giving them something their parents can't. For children who aren't covered by health insurance, the Free Clinic of Southwest Washington provides basic care at no cost. At the beginning of the school year, it was vaccinations. And throughout the year, the clinic's free dental van travels from school to school, doing checkups and teaching children how to care for their teeth. These appointments are set through schools and family community resource centers. We collaborate together to figure out what we can bring to the table to make overall the community healthier. Um, and without those partnerships, it wouldn't be done. Barb West tells us it's a two-way street. As FCRC send people her way for treatment, she sends community members the other direction to get other kinds of services. Let's take a closer look at another partner. Preparing children to learn isn't just about hitting the books. When basic needs aren't being met, such as warm clothing, it's difficult for kids to focus on their lessons. But thanks to a massive volunteer effort, more children than ever are now coming to class ready to succeed. Every Tuesday night and Friday morning, the volunteers arrive, sorting through donations, filling orders. Clothing, hygiene, uh, school supplies, toys, books. Everything on the table will soon be in the home of a disadvantaged child. These kids are hurting and I just want to help them. Joni Vilhauer has a passion for children. She's the coordinator for the Vancouver chapter of Northwest Children's Outreach. Working in cooperation with local agencies, she and her team help thousands of families each year. Because we're not giving them fancy or out-of-the-box things, we're, and they aren't asking for that. They're just asking for those basic things that you and I get up in the morning and don't think twice about. It is a true volunteer effort. Just Nobody, including Joni, gets paid. Their 6,000 square foot office space comes at a rock bottom and discount, and all of the items are either donated or purchased with donated money, which Joni stretches well, as far as it can go. Notice the volunteers are wearing winter coats indoors. Because I would rather buy diapers than turn on the heat. The volunteers don't seem to mind. In fact, as the organization grows, 250 to 350 orders a week. So too does the number of volunteers. And it's exciting to be able to see a full bag of items going out and knowing some mother is going to open this and maybe has nothing. I love it. And so on a cold Friday morning, these ladies inspect, fold, sort, and box up clothing, finding warmth in each other. <laughs> and the knowledge that they've improved the life of a child. And there shouldn't be any reason that a child can't have his basic necessities that are necessary for him just to go to school every day. A number of community organizations, including FCRCs, put in orders for their clients and the volunteers stuff all the items into bags which are picked up once a week. If you'd like to donate clothing, toys, money or other items, go to their website. That's northwestchildrensoutreach.org. There are lots of ways for you to get involved in the lives of children. It can be anything, clothes, food, money, and most valuable of all, your time. There are a number of volunteer opportunities for individuals or groups. For example, the Lunch Buddies program set up by the Vancouver School District Foundation pairs adult mentors with students for a weekly lunch date. It's fun for grown-ups and students get a positive role model. To find out about lots of opportunities, just contact the closest Family Community Resource Center. It's oftentimes difficult, even as a parent, to find ways to volunteer in the school, and the Community Resource Center gives you an avenue to be able to do that. You can also call the school district directly at 313-4727.
Now, what to do if you want to use some of the services available? Oh, that's easy too. Head to any of the schools that have a Family Community Resource Center. Go to the school's front office and the folks there can direct you to the center. The coordinator at the FCRC can get you started. It's time now for We Learn, a look at how Vancouver Public Schools are using technology to improve student learning. Answering the call from the government and industry, the school district is nearing its goal of opening a STEM school. Slated for 2012, the district's STEM school will emphasize science, technology, engineering and math. In the fall, the district hosted a symposium to gather ideas. One of the featured guests was an administrator from a STEM school in San Diego. One of that school's key successes is building partnerships with businesses and colleges, something Vancouver is looking to emulate. Providing uh, direct mentors to, to students of engineers, for example, providing internships, externships for teachers. Uh, it's a way to connect the education piece to what the industry really requires or is, is looking for. For students, a STEM education would make them more college and job ready in high tech fields. Even though money is tight, the district believes that working with partners to create a comprehensive plan will also help our local economy. To stay local, go to the Clark College, go to WSU and get a high quality STEM related education and then stay within our local community in a STEM field and not feel like they have to move away to find those job opportunities. The proposed plan would locate the school in either an existing school or a new facility and would host students in grades 6 through 12. A Columbia River senior uses science to earn a full ride to college. As Colleen Nelson shows us, one project is taking her as far as her feet can run. And the crowd goes wild. Sure, this student's an athlete. I just really enjoy running and then also when you race, when you finish, I like that feeling. <laughs> But this time, the cheers she hears aren't just for her cross-country and track accomplishments. They're for her academic dominance. I saw an article about barefoot running, and I thought it was really interesting. And it made a lot of interesting claims about like injury rates, better posture, better stride. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to test that. Rebecca Leong decided she wanted a shot at a $50,000 scholarship. So she entered the National Yes Competition, a high school test of scientific endurance. And Rebecca's project definitely wasn't a sprint. It was a marathon with several months in the making. The goal? To compare barefoot runners with those wearing shoes to see how they performed. And I did this by taking a group of runners and then following them over like 12 weeks and seeing what kind of injuries they, they developed. And then based on that, I found that maybe like a lot of the media hype about barefoot running may not necessarily be accurate. Her study didn't just grab the attention of her fellow athletes, it also impressed the Yes Competition judges to the tune of first place. Her prize, $50,000 to use toward tuition, room and board, and books at the college of her choice. The teacher who mentored her wasn't surprised. Well, I think one of the main reasons why students go really far in competitions like the Yes Competition is that it's different. You know, she was telling me that one of her judges was actually a runner himself and so he had a real interest in you know the results of her experiment and she can't just help but feel a huge sense of pride she works so hard she's one of the hardest working students i've ever had and she just puts everything into everything that she does yeah rebecca says she intends to do an even larger study with a greater control of variables but before that happens she has some big decisions to make including which college to attend dartmouth or university of washington and then wherever her running shoes take her for in the know i'm colleen nelson at the same school board meeting vancouver school of arts and academics was recognized for receiving a prestigious state honor vsaa was given a 2010 washington achievement award for overall excellence just a handful of elementary middle and high schools are honored each year the Achievement Award measures performance in seven different categories year after year, which means VSAA is consistently among the top schools in the state. The Drama Department at Fort Vancouver High School uses a multimedia approach to teach history. Cars, can't go to the theater or movies anymore. To tell the story of the Diary of Anne Frank, Fort students used audio, video and other images along with drama to show what it was like for Anne Frank and her family to hide during German occupation in World War II. The actors tell us it was challenging, but rewarding. This is an actual person, and to portray someone that was a real person on stage is a completely different experience for me. We've just reached so many people, and so many people are excited to come. 
and I think it's our best production yet. To enhance the lessons about Anne Frank, Fort sponsored a writing competition at McLaughlin Middle School. A lot of the kids wrote poems, songs, essays, and I was reading them and they were, they were good. Like they were talking about things that I never talked about in seventh and eighth grade. The play featured two completely different casts who switched off between performances. It's a record-setting night of generosity at the annual Mr. C.R. Pageant. $105,024.61. That's right, more than $100,000 raised for Doran Becker Children's Hospital. 17 Columbia River High School seniors danced, sang, told jokes, and strutted their stuff. The night also included a heartfelt thank you from a parent whose child was treated at Doran Becker's. In the end, Nate Dahlstrom took home the crown. As part of the build-up to the event, the contestants and the rest of the Mr. CR committee took a trip to the hospital to meet patients. Columbia River Video Production students documented the trip, and you can see their touching video after this episode of In the Know. Speaking of video production students, we're putting a spotlight on their work in a new series called The Young Filmmakers Project. We feature several short films made in class and we interview a filmmaker or two each episode to see what they're learning and how it helps them make their movies. The Young Filmmakers Project airs on Comcast Channel 28 at 10.30 a.m. and 8 p.m. every day. We also want to tell you about a film we've produced. Behind the Curtain, the Crucible is a rare look behind the scenes of a high school play. From casting calls to opening curtain, we followed students and staff at Vancouver School of Arts and Academics as they prepared their version of the Arthur Miller classic, The Crucible. This half-hour documentary airs a number of times each day on channels 27, 28, and 29. Of course, just about everything we bring you on Comcast is also available on our YouTube page. That address is youtube.com backslash vansdtv. There's also a link to it from the school district's website. That address is vansd.org. Just click the YouTube button on the top left-hand corner. That's just about it for now. Thanks for watching In the Know. I'm Helen Raptus.